Hello and welcome back to another Warlords of Draenor lore video. This time we are going to be covering Grom Hellscream. Well, also called Grommash. He was known by both names and he was the leader of the Warsong clan. The Warsong clan is based in Nagrand and they are known mainly for their wolf riders. They were quite honourable and were definitely one of the larger orc clans during the pre-First War times. During the events preceding the First War, Grom's warlike attitude and just the way that he led his clan meant that they were one of the first clans to act on Ner'zhul's suggestions of the Draenei actually being their enemy. These suggestions were, of course, incorrect and were really the result of Kil'jaeden's tri uh, trickery. So he was also one of the first guys to drink the blood of Manoroth. This was more Gul'dan sort of thing, and while Ner'zhul did warn a bunch of the, um, the orc uh, chieftains that this is bad, this blood is bad, well, all that Grom really valued was the power that it would give him, and he really valued that above all else, including the fact that it would make his people a slave to the Burning Legion. So Gul'dan thought that Grom and uh, the others like Ogrim, and just basically the, the leaders of the larger Orcish clans would start to fight over ruler, like rulership of the Orcish people. So instead what he did is he installed Black Hand, also known as Black Hand the Destroyer, as the war chief of the First Horde. And once the Draenei were thought to be thoroughly and wholly defeated, Kil'jaeden had no use for the orcs. They were just a means for him to get rid of the Draenei because, well, the Draenei had escaped him and he didn't like this. He had a little bit of a personal thing against them, especially against Velen. So yeah, he thought they were dead, didn't have much use for the orcs and they were stuck on Draenor and they were very eager to find new lands to invade because they had this bloodlust but nothing to invade it, like not invade it on them, unleash it on. Hell, even in terms of resources and stuff, the demonic corruption on the planet, it wasn't rampant, but there was certainly some of it there, and the place wasn't really in its best shape. They needed resources and that sort of thing. Now, this, of course, would no longer be a problem due to Medivh. The wizard Medivh, who was under the possession of Sagaris, eventually did contact Gul'dan, and this led to the opening of the Dark Portal and the first war between the orcs and the humans. Grom and the Warsong were involved in the first war, but during the second war, they instructed by Ner'zhul to stay behind. I'm actually not particularly sure why this happened. Perhaps if I had played through Warcraft 2, I would know. Now, after the Horde were defeated by the Alliance of Lord Ron, him and his clan were sent through the Dark Portal, and this was mainly to raid human targets and to steal powerful artifacts back, stuff like the Skull of Gul'dan and the Book of Medivh. Now, the destruction of the Dark Portal at the end of Warcraft 2, or at least its expansion, left them stranded in Azeroth. They felt betrayed, and really they were stuck there. They went into hiding in the wilds of Lordaeron and survived off raiding and scavenging, and in general, not re they weren't really living it up. A bit of a meagre existence just trying to scrape by. And as time went on, well, the older, more demonic-powered sort of or orcs, they were getting weak and old, and the new orcs didn't really have the strength or wits to, um, to really lead the clan forward, and it looked like the clan would fade into history. But uh, yeah, so during this time, Grom had really struggled personally with fighting his demonic bloodlust, and it was sapping his strength and making him weaker. And really, from what I can gather, it was kind of as if he was going cold turkey in the whole thing. Now, eventually, the events of Warcraft 3 would transpire, or the events at the start of Warcraft 3, and Thrall would break out of his internment camp. Thrall eventually did seek out and find Grom, and he wanted to learn about his people. Grom was quite inspired by the way Thrall had escaped, and his just his ways, his mercy, the way he was, and he thought he was very honourable. And uh, this honour sort of thing, it was it's really valued by all orcs, perhaps apart from Gul'dan. And uh, he did agree to teach Thrall about the orcish people, about their ways, their history, and then also orcish tactics, how they fought in battle and that sort of thing. Thrall, of course, had also been partially taught some human stuff because of um, his time at the internment camp. He knew a little bit about how humans operated in terms of war. Anyway, eventually the humans that were onto Thrall, on, on his tail, would come close to finding them, so they decided to split up for the safety of both of them, and Grom gave Thrall his necklace as a friendship... a friendship of signal. No, a signal of friendship. Eventually, Grom and the Warsong would unite with Orgrim Doomhammer and the Frostwolf clan, and once they did all this, they elected Thrall to be their kind of joint leader, and they started battling the humans and freeing the m just multitude of orcs from all the different slavery camps that were around the place. Thrall was this war chief, and he was really held in high regard and honour by everyone there. They ended up going west to Kylmondor. Actually, it's probably worth saying the Doomhammer died at roughly this point, and Thrall took his, um, well, was given, I suppose, his armor and his weapon, the Doomhammer, which is one of the more legendary weapons in the game. 
So while on Kyle Mundor, Grom was given a mission by Thrall, and what they needed to do was secure some lumber to start, I suppose just uh, really give the give them a start in terms of resources on the new continent, and uh, this was from Ashenvale. Now Ashenvale, of course, well, we'll get on to what happens there, but let's just say the Night Elves weren't too happy. And while on the way there, he felt a bit of a twang of his old bloodlust, and he started attacking human settlements in the Stone Talon Mountains. Now, while Grom and the Warsong finally did reach Ashenvale, they had disobeyed Thrall's orders in attacking the different humans. Anyway, they began cutting down the trees and that sort of thing. Now, these were very ancient trees, and the Night Elves really loved their trees. They were very angry, and the Sentinels started ferociously attacking them, and while they did fend off the Elves, they had anger the demigod Cenarius. And sensing this demonic corruption, Cenarius thought them to be, as he put it, demons spawned wretches, and he started slaughtering them. He was very powerful, and they didn't really stand a chance. They couldn't even harm him. Grom tried to tell him that they didn't serve the Legion anymore, but Cenarius did not believe him, and he just continued his onslaught. Now, what did happen here is really one of the defining moments of this character. One of the troll witch doctors sensed a strange form of energy that he thought might be useful in the fight against Cenarius, and it was in the form of a fountain of blood, and this was placed by Manoroth. Manoroth knew that well, Cenarius wasn't going to go down easy because of his experience in the War of the Ancients, so he placed this fountain of blood. And Grom eventually did give in and drink the blood, knowing that its power would allow him to spare much of his clan from the wrath of Cenarius. He butchered the demigod. And then, quite soon after, Manoroth appeared. Oh snap. And, uh, well, to Grom's utter horror, he realized that he had once again made his clan's servants to the Legion. Nice one. Thrall, not Thrall, Manoroth took control of the clan and he started getting them to attack Jaina's forces. This time Jaina and Thrall had of course made the alliance um, between the two of them. And after finding all this stuff out, Thrall and the other horde leaders ended up capturing Grom and they got Jaina and her mages to free him of the curse. Once freed, Grom and Thrall decided to end this once and for all and uh, confront Manoroth. Thrall tried to strike Manoroth with Doomhammer, but it did next to no damage. Thrall was attacked and stunned which led only, well, left only Grom alone to stand against the Pit Lord. Manoroth taunted Grom, and he said that they were one of the same with all the demon blood that ran through their, their veins. Now, this did strike a chord with Grom, but perhaps not the chord that Manoroth would have wanted. Grom charged the Pit Lord and planted Gorhal firmly in his chest. The resulting explosion would mortally wound Grom, but it would free his clan and himself from the demonic corruption. While he was not the best of orcs, he was also ultimately remembered as being quite honourable, with Thrall saying, In many ways, the curse of our people began and ended with Grom. His name meant giant's heart in our ancient tongue. He earned the name a hundredfold as he stood alone before the demon Manoroth and won our freedom with his blood. So, yeah, that's what Thrall said in his monument, and I suppose it does, it does ring true with the character's story. Now, moving on to what the Warlords of Draenor Sight says about him. A passionate voice of pride and fury, Grommash Hellscream only acknowledges pronouncements made in language of uh, made in the language of swinging axes. His clan, the Warsong, is a nomadic clan of dead-eyed archers and bellowing wolf riders who gather at the vanguard of the Iron Horde, raising enemies' lands and homes to embers, and stamping those embers into ash. Lots of war, very very violent, and I'm sure these guys will be a ton of fun to fight, and I'd also imagine that the prevention of the drinking of the demon blood is going to be one of the major things that happens in the upcoming expansion. Anyway, I've really enjoyed making this video, hope you enjoyed watching it, if you did, please like and subscribe, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>